Ya, ma, ya, entra, ya, 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 Heraclio is a yamero. He leads llama caravans. To make a living, Heraclio crosses the world's biggest salt desert twice a year. He comes down from the Altiplano to the lowlands, where he trades blocks of salt for goods. Heraclio owns over a hundred llamas. A few days before setting out on his springtime journey, he brings his best animals down from the upper pastures and composes his caravan. About 20, no more. Hilarion is the oldest llamero in the village. He had to give up long crossings two years ago because he couldn't walk anymore. Hilarion suffers from a deep wound. His son, Roberto, has lived in his own world ever since he was born, the world of silence. The villagers say he is a child of the gods. If Heraclio had a son, he would show him how to pick the most vigorous males and how to tighten the straps without hurting the animals. He would take him along the trails into the rich valleys and teach him how to look at the sky and speak to the stars. Roberto is oblivious to all of that. Roberto has only one friend, his white llama. There are no roads in these mountains, no mailmen. When Heraclio sets out, Everyone in the village asks him to deliver a gift to a distant relative. The Yamero is privy to all the secrets. He is the confident, the low-profile messenger. He's in on every love affair on the Altiplano. For this woman, a letter to her husband, Elias, who works in the salt mines. Heraclio chooses his words well, those that bring comfort. Mama, se ha dado la paz marcado. For this woman, a gift to her daughter about to give birth. Heraclio will carry it for the villages on his route. Heraclio travels to the most remote houses to gather his neighbor's parcels. The weaver lady wants him to bring back fruit in exchange for the shawls she has made. Old Hilarion knows Heraclio is leaving tomorrow. He'd like his Roberto to go on the great voyage too. On these barren plateaus, a battlefield for volcanoes, you never leave, be it for an hour, a day, or a month, without first making an offering to Pachamama, the mother of earth and mountains.
The old Yamero has made up his mind. He's going to ask Heraclio to take his son along. But Roberto has to agree to leave his white llama behind. Late that night, words fly up from the remote village. Quechua words, the Inca tongue. Simple words, those of a worried father. Words that say, tomorrow you will leave with Heraclio. Roberto, can you hear my words? The caravans always have a leading llama. It is always the bravest and strongest, also the one that is closest to the llamero. On the trip, the other animals follow him, and he obeys the llamero's orders. Heraclio has doubts. The journey will be rough. And the young boy is so different. But between Yameros, certain things cannot be refused. Heraclio and little Roberto will be back in three months. Apurate, apurate, vámonos. Estamos viajando a Chile. Tienes que aprender vos. Vamos. Puso, 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 puso. Viajeros, vamos, 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 vamos. Apurate, apurate, apurate. The llamas undergo severe conditions on the caravans. They walk for hours without drinking or eating. Heraclio considers the llama both a mule and a sheep rolled into one. Pachamama has also blessed the animal with cushions on its hooves that make it as silent as the puma. Days go by, Roberto walks. He doesn't complain, he doesn't smile. Heraclio feels alone with his llamas. Them he knows. But this fragile little creature, all wrapped up in his woolen poncho, is beyond him. Every time the herd stops, Roberto huddles down among them. It is the only place he seems to come alive. Men and llamas have lived together for thousands of years. Five centuries ago, the Incas sent hundreds of caravans across the Andes to build and supply their immense empire. Nowadays, Heraclio runs the same routes. Chico, joven, una pregunta. 
vuelta. Eh, la señora embarazada, ¿dónde está? Allá al frente. Ya, muy bien. Hasta luego. A woman is about to give birth. The doll represents a male baby. It will grant the wishes of the future mother. Roberto didn't have a mother. He has never been near a pregnant woman. Es lo siguiente, son los zapatos de la llama. Entonces tú le colocas, digamos, de esta manera. Before crossing the salt desert, a visit to Carlos is a must. Carlos makes shoes and glasses for the llamas. He says that the salar drives one crazy, that the sun mixes with the salt to burn the eyes and feet of any living being traveling through it. Heraclio has heard it all before, but he always pretends to listen as if it were the first time. The salar is not a laughing matter. The Incas built entire cities to study the stars. Like all his people, Heraclio has inherited part of their knowledge. Like them, he reads his path in the stars. He reads the Yamero's fate. Up there, all aspects of life are written. He sees the llama and its enemy, the puma, but also the round houses, the weaver's shuttle, and the tombs of his ancestors. Far from there, old Hilarion regrets not being with his son to talk to him of the great white desert, of the nights when the puma prowls around the herd, and of Pachamama, who has never abandoned him. The Salar de Uyuni is the only possible southward route for the caravans. 300 kilometers of white desert, punctuated here and there by little islands of brown lava. Heraclio was Roberto's age when he crossed for the first time. Heraclio buys his slabs of salt at the Salar's only mine. This is where Elias works. The Salineros cut out the crystal crust 15 hours a day. It has been six months since Elias received news from his wife. Heraclio will bring back a little money to the village. The salt is loaded on the volcanic rim of the Salar. Two blocks per llama, 24 kilos per animal, no more. Heraclio warns Roberto about all the dangers of the great crossing and how to avoid them. They will be alone. They will have to be strong. Walk, walk, and not think of anything else. A hungry puma sometimes wanders into the salt desert. At night, he can kill a llama with a single slash, 
slit its throat, and drag it to the edge. Heraclio, like all the llameros, knows that he will do nothing to stop the big cat. The puma is sacred. The sun burns the eyes. The salt eats into the flesh. This is no place for living things. Llama wool absorbs sun and salt radiations. Llameros use it to protect their animals' eyes. And a man never crosses the salar without a llama wool cap. In the Salar, you walk at night and hide to sleep during the day. Heraclio has read something in the stars. Legend has it that a starving llama tries to devour the sun in order to spread darkness and create chaos on the earth. Pachamama alone can restore the proper order of things. A few coca leaves and some alcohol will quiet her anger. Heraclio prays until nightfall. Roberto has fallen asleep. The llamas have fled. <laughs> In the Salar, and without the Llamero, the Lamas always head to the nearest island because they know they'll find food. But in this desert, the nearest island, even if it seems close by, can be several days away. For the first time, Roberto leads the way. He wants to recover his llamas. Aquí 
The wound isn't serious. The puma made off with one animal, but the rest of the herd is safe. In a week's time, they will reach their destination. The black sun has not been forgotten in the Valley of Flowers. Roberto is welcomed like a hero. The people have been waiting for the llameros and their salt for months now. On the homeward journey, Heraclio has let little Roberto lead the caravan. It took them a month to get back home. On their way, they paid another visit to the young mother. She had a little boy. She called him Roberto. Wife of Elias, the salt miner, plans to buy a few llamas. She needs wool. The weaver had been dreaming about these apples for months. The whole village will enjoy them with her. The voyage is over. Little Roberto has become a llamero. Now, Roberto can lead a caravan. Hope has returned to old Hilarion's heart. The village has found a new llamero. Roberto, of course, still doesn't speak with humans, but everyone will rely on him. He is still the child of the gods. Mm.